the Kinsman Free Public Library's brand new YouTube show, Discovering with Dewey. My name is Miss Kim and I'm the director at the library. I am so happy you're here with me today to discover something new. Now, I'd like to introduce you to someone very special and the star of our show. He's the smartest worm I know. Joining us from his computer, please give a warm hello to Dewey. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, Miss Kim. And hello to all our friends watching. Hi, Dewey. Thank you so much for being here today to help us discover something new. Now, friends, Dewey works with us at the Kinsman Library, and he helps to keep us librarians organized. This is because he's so smart. Say, how did you get so smart, Dewey? Well, I guess it's because I'm such a bookworm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, we get it, Dewey. That was a very funny <laughs> joke. So you have a very important job at the library, Dewey. Can you tell our friends what you do? Sure, you know that little number on the spine of books in the library? Do you mean this number right here? Yes, I'm the one who puts those stickers on the books. Wow, that is a big job. I bet our friends might be wondering, though, what are those numbers? And how do you know what number to put on each book? Great question, Miss Kim. I use the Dewey Decimal System. The Dewey Decimal System? What's that? Did you make that up? Oh, no, I didn't make it up. But I have studied the Dewey Decimal System my whole life, and I'm a pro at it. I come from a long line of worms who have studied the Dewey Decimal System. My mom and dad were both bookworms in libraries, and their parents were too. In fact, they loved the system so much, that's where they got my name, Dewey. Wow, that's so interesting. So, what exactly is the Dewey Decimal System? The Dewey Decimal System was created by a really smart man named Melville Dewey in 1876 as a way to put books in order by subject. It places the books on the shelf by subject using numbers from 000 to 999. It's called decimal because it uses numbers to the right of the decimal point for more detail. Oh, I get it. So, if I wanted to find a book about dinosaurs, I would look up which number on the Dewey Decimal System stands for dinosaurs, and then I would go to that section in the library that has books with that number, right? You got it, Miss Kim. You're pretty smart, too. The Dewey Decimal System assigns the number 567.91 to dinosaurs. So you would go to the shelves and find books with the number 567.91. Awesome! But Dewey, what if I don't know how to look up the do different Dewey Decimal numbers? You're a pro at this, but I'm not. What can I do? Great question, Miss Kim. You don't have to be a pro at it. You can ask one of the friendly librarians to help you. They love the Dewey Decimal System too. And they love helping people even more. Fantastic. Thanks, Dewey. You know something? Spring is here, and Easter is right around the corner. And one of my favorite things about this time of the year is bunnies. Oh, how I wish I had a pet bunny. But I would need to learn all about bunnies and how to take care of them before I could get one as a pet. Hey, maybe I can find a book that could tell me these things. But do you know where I should look? Hey, do you think you can help me with that, Dewey? Of course, Miss Kim. The Dewey decimal number you want to look for is 636.932. Thanks, Dewey. I'm going to head to the bookshelf right now to get some books. Hang on tight, friends. I'll be back in a flash. All right, friends, I'm back. And I found some great books. This nonfiction book titled Rabbit Pals has some really helpful information about bunnies and how to take care of them. Hey, how about if I read it to you all now? 
Yay! Story time! I love story time! This is Rabbit Pals. Oh, look at that adorable bunny. You're rabbit from head to tail. Rabbits make great pets, and each one has its own personality. They can be as playful as puppies and as mischievous as kittens. Rabbits are sociable creatures and enjoy spending time with people, but they do better with a bunny buddy too. And this points out all the different uh, parts of the bunny. So we've got his ears. And did you know that the shape of a rabbit's ears allow them to hear sounds more than two miles away? They can also hear high-pitched sounds that humans can't. And oh, what are those things? That's right, they're his whiskers. A bunny's whiskers are the width of its body. So they warn the rabbit if it's about to enter a narrow tunnel and if it could get stuck. Oh. How about his teeth? A rabbit's teeth never stop growing, but they're worn down by chewing on tough plants like carrots. And then you've got the little nose. Can you wiggle your nose like a bunny? It's kind of hard to do, huh? Rabbits have a great sense of smell, as well as extra scent organs in the roof of their mouth. This helps them to detect predators. And how about these big hind legs? Did you know that rabbits have strong, long hind legs that allow them to stand up to look for predators and to run fast to escape them? And my favorite part of the bunny, that's right, that little cute cottontail. Rabbits sometimes wag their tail when they're annoyed or don't want you to do what you ask them to do. Hey, did you know that there's different kinds of bunnies? You know, just like we have different kinds of dogs, like collies and huskies and Labrador retrievers. Much the same, there's different breeds of bunnies. We've got the dwarf lop, the English spot, the Dutch, the Rex. Oh, there's an Angora bunny. He's nice and fluffy. A Belgian hare a Flemish giant, and a Harlequin. So which type of bunny should you choose? Well, in the wild, rabbits live in groups, and it's best to get at least two rabbits. Otherwise, your bunny will be lonely. Before you buy or adopt a rabbit, check that its eyes are sparkling. Its teeth meet up properly at the front, and that its ears are clean. Oh, and should you get a baby bunny or an adult bunny? Well, baby bunnies are adorable, but they can be destructive, kind of like a puppy. And it can be hard to tell if they're male or female. By choosing an adult, you can find out about your new pet's personality. And if you get one from a rescue center, it will have been health checked and spayed or neutered. Well, what about long hair versus short hair? While long-haired rabbits are cute bundles of fur, they are high maintenance. Short-haired bunnies need grooming about once a week, whereas a long-haired bunnies must be brushed every day, or their fur will get matted and their skin could tear. So should you get a male or a female bunny? Unneutered male rabbits spray urine. You and unspayed females can be very territorial, but both make great pets once they've been neutered or spayed. So should you keep your bunny indoor or outdoors? Well, rabbits make great house pets. If you bunny proof your house, you'll be able to spend more time with them and they'll probably get more exercise than they would on an outdoor run. Outdoor rabbits need a large predator proof cage Home sweet home. So what are some things that I need to get for my bunny? Well, your rabbit needs 
a clean, safe hutch to live in where it can eat, sleep, rest, and hide if it feels scared. It also needs plenty of room to hop, run, jump, and stretch out for a snooze. So here's how to create a perfect pad for your bunny. This is great because it gets all kinds of instructions. It says you want to choose a hutch with a mesh door to let fresh air in. And the bunny says, please put me in my run for a hop in the early morning or late afternoon. That's when I'm feeling most active. And it's very important that you keep it clean. Clean out the toilet area every day and clean up the hunch once a week and only use pet safe cleaning products. Making friends with your bunny. Give your bunny a chance to get used to the sounds and smells of its new home before you try to play with it. Rabbits can be quite timid. They need to know that they have a safe place to hide if they get scared because there are many prey animals. So to introduce yourself, the best way to get to know your new friend is by sitting quietly on the floor. Rabbits are naturally friendly and inquisitive. So if you hold out a treat, such as a yummy carrot, your bunny will probably come to you. Play gently alongside your new pet. Most rabbits prefer not to be picked up or held. Let them show you what they like. And remember, take it slow. Rabbits can see very clearly and they have a blind spot in front of their nose. They may get frightened, frightened if you approach them suddenly, especially from behind. Oh, how should you pet your bunny? Most rabbits like being stroked on the forehead and around their shoulders. They may not like being touched on the ears, feet, stomach, or tail. And remember, if you have other pets at home, you want to make sure your new rabbit is safe inside a cage before introducing him to your other pets. Don't leave them alone together unless you know that they won't get hurt. So, you've got a home for your bunny, you know how to play with your bunny, but what should you feed your bunny? Well, a rabbit's main food should be a high quality hay. Chewing on hay wears its teeth down so they don't grow too long. Remember, a rabbit's teeth never stop growing. You wanna give your rabbit some special treats. Rabbits love fresh vegetables, but if they have too many, they won't eat their hay. Kind of like if you give your puppy too many hot dogs, he doesn't wanna eat his puppy food anymore. Leafy vegetables like carrots and broccoli make great bunny treats, but they should never ever have peas, beans, corn, rhubarb leaves, potatoes, onions, or garlic. Huh, that's good to know. Now, because wild rabbits survive on poor quality grass, they eat some of their droppings oh, to get as much goodness from their food as possible. Ew. Your bunny also needs a fresh source of water at all times. He needs as much water as a medium sized dog. A water bottle with a metal spout is better than a bowl of water, which can get dirty or be knocked over. So remember the daily diet for your bunny should include a bundle of hay the size of its body, a handful of fresh greens, and a tablespoon of green rabbit pellets. And of course, water. So this book goes on to tell you exactly how to brush your bunny. You wanna make sure that you groom your bunny well. Checking on your rabbit every day is the most important part of being a good pet owner. You should make sure its droppings look normal, that it's eating and drinking, and that it doesn't seem unwell or in pain. Now, your rabbit can get pesky parasites, such as fleas and ticks, just like your cat or dog can. So check for signs of them when grooming your bunny. Look inside their ears as well. Now, rabbits don't like getting wet and they shouldn't be given a bath because this will cause panic and may injure the bunny. 
So if your bunny gets dirty, it's best to do a spot clean of the area with a little water and some pet shampoo. As always, you want to make sure that you take care of your bunny to make sure that it's health and safe. Rabbits may be attacked by dogs, cats, foxes, weasels, badgers, and even some birds. So make sure their cage and run is very secure. Rabbits thump the ground with their back legs if they sense a predator nearby. So if you hear that sound, you want to check that your pet is safe. Also, you want to make sure that you take your pet to the veterinarian to get vaccinations. Your pet can catch deadly diseases from wild rabbits and insects. So it's important to vaccinate your bunny. In the wild, rabbits explore the world by sniffing, nudging, chewing, and digging. They're often mischievous and curious, and they don't give up easily. They'll chew and they'll dig because that's normal rabbit behavior. So you can't blame them for trying to chew through a table leg or dig up your floor. It's best to give your bunny toys that they can chew and a sand pit or a box full of shredded paper so that they can behave naturally without causing damage. A bored bunny will start grooming itself more often than usual. So you want to watch for this because you may be a sign that you have a bored bunny. This is when you want to introduce some toys. So what about talking? Do bunnies make noise? Well, they make their feelings known through their ears, tail, and body language. Here's a guide to what your bunny is trying to tell you. Bunny chat. Some bunnies have a lot to say, while others are fairly quiet. Here's some examples of bunny noises and what they mean. Soft tooth grinding means, I'm happy. Chattering teeth or loud tooth grinding means, I'm in pain. Muttering means, I'm angry or unhappy. <gasps> Growling or hissing, I'm very angry. Squealing, I'm in pain or frightened. And clucking means they're relaxed. You also want to watch for your body language of your bunny. The position of a rabbit's ears is a clue to how it's feeling. For, ex for example, if it starts flicking its ears, it wants to play. If its ears are up and turned forward, it means that your bunny's happy. If its ears are turning sideways or backwards, that means that it's getting annoyed. If it's really tilted backwards, it means that it's angry and leave me alone. If the ears are lowered and facing downward, it means he's very unhappy and might be ill. So that's what you really want to watch for to make sure that your bunny is not in need of a vet visit. Finally, let's learn a little bit about what we can do to train our bunny. Training your rabbit is fun for you both. Always use treats to reward your bunny when it, doesn't, when it does what you ask it to do. Never punish your bunny for the wrong thing because your rabbit will become afraid of you. Clicker training is a good way to start. Here, bunny, bunny, bunny. Once your rabbit comes to you when it hears the clicker, start calling its name. And then give it a treat. Repeat this several times. And then try calling without the clicker to see if your rabbit comes to you when it hears its name. Here's some training tips. Only have one animal in the room during training. There should be no noise except the clicker and your voice. Training should only last a few minutes. And make sure your bunny has mastered one trick before moving on to the next. If your rabbit isn't interested, stop and try again later. One of the most important things you want to do is to litter train your, your bunny. So you put a layer of newspaper in a shallow tray and cover it with hay or litter suitable for rabbits, not cat litter. Scoop up a few droppings and scatter them in the tray to encourage your bunny to use it. Well, friends, this book sure taught us a lot about bunnies. 
And what's really cool is it comes with a little quiz at the end of the book, so you can test your knowledge of what you've learned. Again, this book is called Rabbit Pals, and you can find it in the children's room at the Kinsman Library. Wow, that was a great book, Miss Kim. I really learned a lot about bunnies and how to take care of them. Me too, Dewey. You know, another way we can find out even more information? We can ask an expert. And I happen to have a friend who has a pet bunny. I bet she could tell us even more. Hey, I have an idea. Let's call her. Here we go. Well, welcome back, friends, and it's time for Ask an Expert. And I'm here with a real-life bunny expert today. Hello, expert. Hello. Would you mind telling us all your name and how old you are? I'm Katie Veets, and I'm 12 years old. Well, hello, Katie, and thank you for joining us today. We can't wait to learn all about bunnies from you. So do you happen to have a bunny friend with you today? I do. This <gasps> is Max. Max. So what made you decide to get a pet bunny, Katie? Um, Bunnies are pretty easy to take care of, and we wanted uh, another pet, and we also wanted to join 4-H. Wow. 4-H, what's that? So 4-H is a group with a bunch of clubs in it, and you can do a lot with it. Um, you can show a bunch of different animals, and you can also take projects and show at fairs. Wow, that's really cool. Sounds like fun. Now, Max, is Max a boy or a girl bunny? Max is a male rabbit. Okay. Did you get him when he was just a baby bunny? Yes. All right. And what kind of bunny is he? He's a Dutch. A Dutch bunny. So can you tell us a little bit about Dutch bunnies? What makes them different from other bunnies? Um, Dutch bunnies were actually used for laboratories for testing. Mm -hmm. And then they became more of a pet and a show bunny. Okay. So how old is Max? Max is eight months. Oh, wow. So is he still considered a baby or is he considered full grown? He's technically, yeah, he's um, almost full grown, but he's still technically a baby. Awesome. Can you hold him up again and show us how big he is? There he is. Hi, Max. <laughs> now, we read in our story that bunnies don't necessarily like to be held. Does Max like to be held? Depends. Um, sometimes yes and sometimes no. Okay. Uh-huh. So where does your bunny live? Does he have his own house? He lives um inside in a a play in our playroom and he lives in a cage. Awesome. So what kind of things do you have to do to take care of Max? Um you have to feed him, make sure they have clean water. Um they always have to have hay. Um you feed them pellets one once a day and make you have to make sure that their nails aren't too long and that their teeth don't grow too long. Oh, we did read that a bunny's teeth just keeps growing and growing. Mm -hmm. So chomping on things like hay and carrots helps to yeah. keep them nice and trim, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Speaking of hay and carrots, what's your what's Max's favorite thing to eat? Max's favorite thing to eat um, is definitely lettuce. Oh, okay. Does Max like to eat Doritos? No, we have never done that, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> so how often does Max sleep? Does he sleep at night like we do? Um, yes and no. They're Ooh. not considered nocturnal, but they also don't, they're not up all day. They'll sleep. Yeah, they sleep with their eyes open. It's a little weird. Whoa. But, um, they sleep a little bit during the day, kind of like a nap. And then they do sleep during the night. Okay. So what is Max's favorite thing to do? Definitely to get out of his cage. His favorite thing to do is definitely to run. Okay. Does he have toys? Mm, he, ha he chews on blocks. Okay. Um, but we do, um, we have a um, rubber ball, and um, if I kind of push it towards 
him, he'll kind of like launch himself towards it and he'll kind of push it back to me. And sometimes <laughs> he'll think it's fun. Sometimes he'll just ignore it. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, last question, Katie. We read in our book that bunnies like to have a bunny buddy. Does Max have a bunny buddy at home? Um, Max does. He has two sisters. Um, they aren't from the same mom, but they li pretty much live together. They're all in different cages, and they're not allowed out at the same time, but he does, like, interact with them. Oh, that's so cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, Katie and Max, for joining us today. And I know that our listeners are going to be so happy that they learned so much from a bunny expert. Bye, Katie. Bye. Miss Kim, your friend Katie sure does know a lot about bunnies. She's a real expert, and she takes very good care of her pet bunny. She sure does, Dewey. Thanks again to my friend and bunny expert, Katie Veets. <laughs> What's so funny, Dewey? Oh, I was just thinking about that picture book we got the last time we were at the library. About the hungry bunny, you know that one? It was so fun to read. Oh, it is a pretty fun book. Hey, do you think our friends would like to hear it? Oh, yes, Miss Kim, please, please read it. Okay, this is a fiction book titled Hungry Bunny by Claudia Ruda. Here I come. Grr. Can you hear my tummy making noises? I am one hungry bunny. It's time for a red, delicious, and oh, hard to reach apple. Hey, maybe you could help. Could you please shake your hands so that the apples fall down? Ready? Shake your hands. Shake, 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 shake. Good shaking. Oh, no. We shook down the leaves. Could you help me blow the leaves away? Ready? Blow. That's much better. Thank you. Oh no, my scarf has blown away. It's stuck in the book and I'm still hungry. Hey, could you help me grab my scarf? Grab, grab. Will you place the scarf here for me and hold it tight? I can use it to climb up the tree and pick a tasty apple. Let's see, here's the scarf. Oh, we've got it. Let's put it right here and we'll hold it tight and our bunny can climb, 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 climb up the tree. Just one more. Great teamwork. I got them all. Can you hang on to that scarf for me? Whoops, I'm running late. What an uphill battle. Wait a minute. Why am I going uphill? We can fix that. <gasps> we can tilt the book. Can you help me tilt the book? Ready? Tilt, 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 tilt. Easy as pie. Now my wheels are turning. There he goes. He's zipping down the hill. <gasps> Why don't we have even more fun? Would you rock that book back and forth? Can you help me, friends? Rock back and forth. There you go, you got it. Keep going, keep going. Oh, wowza, 
keep going. And get ready to turn. Oh my goodness, we gotta turn the book around. Can you roll your hands around in a circle while I turn the book around? There we go. Uh-oh, get ready to tumble. Oops, I guess I've upset the apple cart. Where are all the apples? Here they are. Let's just pick these up. On the road again. Hey, but what's this? Oh, I think I'm going to need some help. Can you use my scarf to make a bridge? Oh, let's see. Let's go get the scarf. And let's see. Can we do this? And then across, I think we got it. Does that look like a bridge? Yeah. Perfect, thank you. I'm at the end of my rope. Good thing I'm almost home. Uh-oh, I'm stuck. Would you give me a little push, please? Can you push? Push, and I'll push right here. Oh, goodness gracious. Push them. Pop! <gasps> right on time for Mom's apple pie. Not a bad apple in the bunch. Yum. We saved a piece for you. The end. <laughs> I just love that book. Thanks, Miss Kim. You're welcome, Dewey. You know, I have another friend named Kylie Garrett who knows lots and lots of songs. I wonder if she knows one about bunnies. Let's tune in right now to Music Moments with Kylie to find out. Little bunny foo foo hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Down came the fairy, and she said, Little bunny foo foo, I don't want to see you, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. I'll give you two more chances, and if you don't behave, I'll turn you into a goon. So the next day, little bunny foo-foo hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Down came the good fairy, and she said, little bunny foo-foo, I don't want to see you, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. I'll give you one more chance, and if you don't behave, I'll turn you into a goon. So the next day, little bunny foo-foo hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Down came the good fairy, and she said, little bunny foo-foo, I don't want to see you, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. I, I gave you three chances, and you didn't behave. I'll turn you into a goon. So poof, you're a goon. And the moral of the story is, hair today, goon tomorrow. Wow, that was a really silly song. And Kylie sure does have a pretty voice. She sure does. Well, Dewey, I think I've learned everything I want to know about bunnies and how to take care of them. Maybe I'll be able to get a pet bunny or two of my own someday. I had a lot of fun discovering with you today, Dewey, and I hope you did too, friends. Oh, and don't forget to check the description below where you can find links to more bunny stories. Thanks for coming for today, friends, and we can't wait to see you next time on Discovering with Dewey! That's me! Hi friends, I'm going to end today's episode with Crafting Corner. 
Today on Crafting Corner, we invite you to make your own diorama, depicting a scene from your favorite book or movie using bunny peeps and or chick peeps as the characters. Here's the one Kylie and I made to depict the book Max's Chocolate Chicken by Rosemary Wells. We were inspired by Miss Diane's virtual story time on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to watch it, click on the link below in the description. Also, we invite you to send us a picture of your completed peep diorama to reference at kinsmanlibrary.org. You can find that link below in the description as well. Then we'll share your creations on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Thanks friends and have fun crafting. Mm -hmm.